Hey everybody, Teddy J on Crypto for GrowMyBag.tv. Hope you're having a good one. There is a lot to get through this morning. It's crazy. So you have the DeFi Education Fund and Biba Collection teaming up to sue the SEC over its classification of Biba token as a security. Wow. I was going to talk about this a couple of days ago um, when I first saw the article pop up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Th there was a lot more going on be beyond that. Plus, I wanted to see how other things played out. The SEC is flailing. They are absolutely flailing. Um, they're just taking it on the chin all over the place. So I'm sitting back and I'm just going, well, here's another case where the SEC is going to be forced to define what is the security as far as cryptos go and how the, you know, like what are those parameters? Like a lot has to go into that and they have yet to do it. And now they're being called on the carpet and not just there. Congress is calling them on the carpet, too, because if you're going to declare Ethereum a security, then how is Prometheum going to actually handle custodial services for Ethereum? How is that legal? So they, so the SEC is really mucking it up right now. Excuse me. Um, then there you have to think about, you know, a Bitcoin liquidity prices crisis right now. It's not really a crisis, right? You have a lot of people that are out there buying buying Bitcoin, but they're removing it off the exchanges because they're figuring, I don't plan on selling it anytime soon. I can always put it back, but there's no reason to hold it there. Aha. <laughs> there's the liquidity problem. So you can start to see how that how that starts to pan out and we'll see, you know, how that how that actually happens. Now, I will note a couple of days ago, I told you about how Hong Kong is looking to introduce Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs. The difference there is supposedly you'll be able to exchange for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, wouldn't that be different? So, again, have to pay attention to what's going on on a global scale so you can have a better idea about what the market's doing with regard to digital assets. Just saying, I don't pay attention to just, you know, my neck of the woods. I'm trying to look across the whole world. If I can get a better idea about what's going on around the whole world, I can make better informed decisions for myself. And that's why I'm telling you guys to try to do the same so you can make better informed decisions for yourselves. Next up, the debate around an Ethereum spot ETF happening in the United States still a debate. Low, low, low end, and you have some putting it at the high end. I'm kind of in between. I mean, the SEC really wants to make really wants to mess things up, and I don't understand why that would be happening. Something I apologize right now because it looks like my video is not playing nicely, and I don't understand why that's going on. So hopefully, to correct itself in a little bit. Um, Something else that's going on, Munchables, a Web3 project on Blast on the Blast uh, blockchain, they suffered a $62.5 million hack. That's that's not pretty. That's not pretty at all. You want to some, know something else that's not pretty? Qcoin, we already know that they're being brought up on AML charges, the two owners, and Qcoin itself being brought up on those charges. But something that really hit, there's a run on the exchange that's already hit $500 million. I expect it to continue. Their, their coin, KCS, down 15%. I'm expecting that to go higher. I'm just saying. It's not looking good for Qcoin. I don't know what kind of plan, if any, they have, because I would I would start to think that, you know, they were devoid of AML and K, you know, of KYC, which is anti-money laundering, know your customer. I, I think they were devoid of those kinds of or a deeper level that I thought they should have um, on their platform. And then they started putting it in. So they knew this was coming. So now if you know this is coming or you thought it was coming, what's your plan to move the company forward? And maybe they're thinking, eh, don't care because we're trying to stay out of jail. Just saying, this ain't this, this is not Nigeria where somebody can escape. This is the United States. They play the game differently. So if you're here, you have problems. I don't know if they're actually in country, so we'll have to figure that one out. But that's not going to be pretty. Um, next up, short sellers. Short sellers are shorting up to $11 billion on crypto-related companies, crypto-related um, publicly traded companies like MicroStrategy and Coinbase. And I don't get it. 
are you looking to get burned or is this a leap? If you're playing a long term, we think it's going to go down. Maybe, but how it depends on how much you think it's going to go down. But you're shorting micro strategy, you're shorting Coinbase. Both of them have are experiencing really good highs right now. Micro strategy hitting its all time high. I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm. I would really like somebody to explain that to me because I'm not. I'm not seeing how that would work out well. But we'll see. Maybe they know something we don't. But I just don't see it. There are too many. There are too many positive factors going on in the digital space for me to think that MicroStrategy is going to take a dive. And here's something that's to MicroStrategy is MicroStrategy's advantage. If MicroStrategy was to come out with a new product, because remember, Michael Saylor said, "Hey, we are a development company." And we're developing blockchain solutions. If they come out with anything and it works out even partially well, think of it, you know, something as simple as a wallet, you know, hardware, software, whatever it is, browser based, whatever tools to help you evaluate, because that's their history, tools to help you evaluate the crypto space, anything like that, any kind of software product that comes out of micro strategy is going to propel them higher. And this is a company that this is what they do. So I'm sitting back and I'm kind of saying, well, any kind of win will make their make their stock price goes up, go up. So how are you shorting? I, I'm not seeing it. Floki up 600 percent for the month, 600 percent monthly gain. That's a big wow for me. I have to check to see if it's true. But there was an article that I read and they called that out. And my son was yapping about it a little bit. And I was just like, really? So I have to look at that. But. Even if that's partially true, that's still that's still a big wow. Um, HSBC, I told you yesterday that there was a company, Nila, that um, a, a gold miner that was investing about one point two billion dollars into Bitcoin. Today, you have HSBC, Hong Kong Bank. Um, <laughs> they've now tokenized gold. They've tokenized a real world asset and that real world asset is gold. I'm dumbfounded. I'm dumbfounded. It's nuts. And then you have to think about Hong Kong also is looking to have Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs. The difference with their ETFs is supposedly the way it's going to work is you'd be able to redeem those AT those ETFs for actual coin. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know how it's going to work out. But if it comes to pass, adoption goes like this. Adoption will will definitely skyrocket. You need to pay attention to Asia. You really do need to pay attention to Asia and what's going on in that space. At least that's what I would tell people. If you are a reader of Decrypt's newsletter, do not click any links. They're they're. Uh, their service was compromised and there was a phishing email that was sent saying that there is going to be a decrypt token airdropped. No, that's not happening. And I like decrypt. So that's why I'm giving this public service announcement. And Vitalik Buterin and I both agree. Um, and I think a lot of people actually agree that the, the definition of metaverse is not well defined right now because we're all still trying to figure it out. But his suggestion is to take it beyond virtual reality. And I really agree with that because there's so much more going on as the two worlds go like this, right? I'm going to go from reality to virtual reality and back. I'm going to go to reality, virtual reality, another virtual reality, reality back to, I'm going to be maneuvering around in so many ways, spaces, doing so many different things. It does need to be redefined or defined more broadly. And that's why for the, Met for the Metaverse Standards Forum, we actually sit back and contemplate all of this. We have meetings all the time about how this could possibly work. And I'm talking about some of the smartest people I've, I've known. And I, I've met the guy that invented Easy Pass. He invented HDTV. These people are really, really smart. Um, Vitalik Buterin is not wrong when he says it needs a broader definition, and it does. The metaverse needs a broader definition, and I think it's coming. I think I think the I think the 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 mind trust that's out there that's involved in that space. I think that's what's coming. I heard somebody else say that you know they're negative on the metaverse, and I cracked up. 
I absolutely cracked up because I just sat there and I was just like, but it's already here. It's already here. Pieces of the metaverse are already here. What do you mean you're not you're against it or you're negative on it? When it comes to drive and adoption, gaming things like metaverses, that's that's going to drive adoption. I'm going to buy things in a met. I'm going to buy things here to use in a metaverse, or I'm going to buy. You know, I'm going to pay for it in regular fiat to use in a metaverse. Maybe even digital assets. I'm going to go to the metaverse. I'm going to buy things in the metaverse that I'm going to be able to receive in the real world. There are just a whole bunch of different things that go on in that space that I don't know that I can be negative on. I don't know that I could ever be negative on it. And I keep referring to go take a look at Ready Player One, a movie. Sounds nuts, but take a look at the movie and you don't understand why I'm not negative. Probably will never be negative about the metaverse. Does it need a lot of help? Yes, but that's why we stepped up and said we're we're gonna be a part of this metaverse standards forum and we're gonna help people get there. We're gonna bring thought leaders together and help people get there. That's the whole push. And then finally. We have no, we have two more things. Morgan Stanley is poised to actually start pushing Bitcoin ETFs, Bitcoin spot ETFs. Supposedly, that's what they're going to be doing within the next two weeks. Another positive macro event. Again, not understanding shorts. Then you have hashtag Bitcoin futures ETF changing to hashtag Bitcoin ETF. Their ticker is DeFi. They're going to start. They're going to start trading today. They're going to start trading today. And that means you have another company that's going to be out there scrambling for Bitcoin. Just saying we should be paying attention to all this. I try to take a more global perspective because what happens on the global stage is going to affect what I do with my digital assets, whether it be to sell, buy, trade, whatever it is. It's going to affect my thinking. And the greater the information I have at my fingertips, the better my decisions are going to be. But you know what we should do? 